Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff back again with another one of the A disease of Christian Rock. So yeah, I did the A's in my first one, and I'm going to be doing the B's in this one. So yeah, just a briefly, if you haven't seen these before, or haven't seen the previous one where I explained it real briefly, just looking at my vinyl collection at Christian Rock, Hard Rock, and Metal that I have on vinyl. Now, I don't... Um, I'm not actually going back into the lighter side of rock. It's really the heavier stuff. So there's quite a few bands that would qualify as being rock or pop rock, things like that. A lot of bands. It's not all inclusive of everything I have Christian music. It's strictly the heavier side. I use Christian rock loosely when I'm really looking more at the heavier stuff, the hard rock and metal. So anyway, to get into this, I realized A's, there were some, uh, you know, uh, you know, there weren't as many in the A's, um, but B's actually contain some of the biggest, bigger named bands in the Christian rock and metal movement. So let's get into it. All right, up first is a band called Barnabas. This is their first album. They were a band from 1980. They put out, well, I'm going to do this. They put out five albums in their career. They had, at times in the early days, you could see from the looks of them, they were going for kind of a punkish flair. Then when they got signed to a different label, they went with a, uh, it, it became a little more of a melodic, hard rock, and, you know, at the time it would have been considered more of a, you know, a metal edge for the, for the 80s. And then the last album, Little Foxes. Um, I actually, around the time, I've told the story before, around the time Little Foxes came out, uh, I I uh, went to visit my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time, her fiance. We were in the military. She was stationed in Oklahoma. I was stationed in Mississippi. We hadn't gotten married or got together yet. Went to visit her one time. Picked this up at the Christian bookstore in her town in Oklahoma City. Looked at the back of it and saw that it was recorded in Oklahoma City. So I pulled up a phone book. Remember those phone books? Big numbers, a bunch of numbers in a book. I pulled up a phone book and looked up the singer and her husband. And they were in the phone book. And I called, talked to Nancy, the singer. She invited us over. My wife and I went over, spent the day with her talking for a long time. Later, the husband came home. The drummer came over. We sat around and watched Amadeus, had Little Caesars pizza. Uh, anyway, it was an experience, interesting experience. But So I got to meet them back in the day when this came up. By the time this came out, though, the band had broke up. This was released. The band didn't even apparently know that it was being released or didn't know it had been released. When I called and said, hey, I got your new album, they're like, oh, I didn't even know it came out. The band had kind of folded prior to this and uh now nah, there was some issues there but anyway they were one of the you know people say you know that stripers the first band that really was the edgy heavy metal and they really were in a lot of ways but four years before striper barnabas was tearing it up with their and they they had the 80s look at times with the spandex and everything so they wore the costumes that the la bands were doing they weren't an la band but they really were out there in the trenches already doing it. Now, yeah, you could say Petra and Resban and all those bands started it, but this is a band that was really a little more on the edge and dressed the part and, you know, were, were very much attacked in Christian circles because of the way they did. So they really were some of the forefront band, one of the forefront bands that really, you know, had that heavy edge, had the look, and got a little, a lot of flack for it. So... All right, and then probably one of the bigger of the, I would say one of the top one of the in the B's one of the big three, one of the big three, big four, big three, at least back in the day. Yeah, back in the eighties, I, I think these guys were considered one of the big three for me at least. We're talking Baron Cross, Baron Cross, California band. They uh, they had the look, they had the sound. Mike Lee's vocals are often compared to Bruce Dickinson. He has that same kind of flair, so there's a lot of comparisons there. They released. I only have. They released a, a bunch of albums. But I've only got three of the four on vinyl. Um, they were on Enigma, like Striper. So I think Striper had broke in, broke the door down for Christian metal for Enigma Records, which was not a Christian label. And so then they signed. I think Baron Cross. Let's try to do it again. And so they had MTV videos and everything. Um, did not achieve the same success as Striper, but I have these two albums. And then the third album has eluded me as far as getting a copy on vinyl. And then a later album in the 90s, uh, this was released on vinyl. And so, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm hoping to eventually find that other one. There's a live album that I... Was a live album on vinyl? 
All of their stuff was released, remastered on CD, so I'm hoping one day maybe we'll get a, some vinyl reissues because these are all OG copies. So, But yeah, check them out. Just They were one of the top bands back in the day. You, you talked about Christian Rock, you're talking Striper, and you're talking Baron Cross and some of the other bands in here because they really were you know, on that edge with those bands. Up next is a fairly modern band, uh, Becoming the Archetype. They um, uh, they had a few albums. This is their most recent album. They got back together and released this just like last year. But most of their work was done what, 10 years ago. I saw them in concert once. They did quite a few albums and changed styles periodically. First album was very much like, you know, extreme metal, death metal, guttural, not guttural, but the vocals were like really, really extreme. And then the second album was uh, quite a change and, and became more of a technical metal. Uh, third album, they continued on. And anyway, I, I really liked stuff beyond the first album more just because it was a little less harsh vocal wise. Anyway, and then they disappeared for a while. They got a new singer. They got, you know, they then they disappeared for a while. And then they came back like last year with this album. So um, it's the only one that I have on vinyl. I'm not, I don't know if their other stuff was even on vinyl, but it'd be great if it was. But yeah, one of those great bands. Again, extreme metal. Um, this one is the, is a little mixture of it. You know, it's still got some of the extreme vocal styles, but it's also got the, uh, technical playing so it's like a technical metal stuff so yeah check them out become the archetype okay and up next is one that i actually just showed recently because they finally got released on vinyl just like a month ago so two months ago and that's believer one of the early uh thrash ex uh, i'm gonna say more of a, a more extreme metal they were just one of the early ones that did it and did it very well and uh, 1989, so they, they, these are going to be coming out right on the heels of like the Vengeance Rising and stuff that was pushing the, the boundaries of extreme metal. And so they came out with this. They had a demo first, and then they put out this album, Extraction from Mortality. Great stuff. Just released on vinyl. Hard to find the original. Sandy Obscure, um, again. And and they, they were very, uh, very technical metal, too. They even implore, you know, em, uh, employed some... Uh, cellos and stuff and and some opera type singing and very technical as they got they they got experimental um as they went with uh with each album dimensions and these first three albums are very much the classics 89 91 93 something 81 through 93 these three albums and then the band was kind of done and then in 2009 they came back now, when they came back, admittedly, they were admittedly um, not openly speaking of their faith. They were, I, I'm not exactly sure, but they're not really considering themselves or considered, you know, still doing the type. And musically, it's a little different. Um, not quite as harsh, but still very heavy, but a little more refined. And then they did Transhuman again along the same line. So 2009, 2011, they came back. So the early 90s stuff is a slightly different style. They're still heavy, still very heavy. But, you know, that they were heavier in the earlier days. And, and even back in the early days, their lyrics were not super preachy or super religious. So, I, you know, I just know that apparently they, they were, uh, you know, a little less open about faith and stuff in the, in the last few albums. But the first few albums, they just... Uh, you know, they had allusions to religious themes there. They were not at all, you know, they weren't anything like Striper with the, in, in any of those kind of open stuff. So Believer, though, one of the heavier bands back in the day that we all really enjoyed. All right, up next is a band. Um, I want to say they're a California band. I know Marcus, I believe, was from California. But the um, Betrayal, they gave us two albums. They were going to be, they're going to be in the thrash movement back in the day, uh, in the early 90s, I guess. Um kind of spawned out of work with Martyr, which was one of the bands that did a bunch of demos. They went from kind of a somewhat hardcore to sort of a thrash metal with some of the member changes. And then they kind of branched off and, and some of the guys uh, went on to do Betrayal, very much more uh, in the thrash scene. Uh, heavy and stuff. And these were reissued on vinyl a few years ago to my delight because these are two really great albums. And yeah, there's been some other stuff that came out by Betrayal uh, on CD later um, that was kind of, again, a little different. Um, not sure if they're vinyl worthy. I mean, it'd be great to have them, but, you know, there's a compilation. It's got some different stuff, a little more experimental, but, you know, 
I wouldn't mind having it. I have the CDs, but these these two albums were solid. Uh, you know, they were on a you know a label and everything. They you know so great stuff. All right, a one-off Biogenesis. Only one on that I have on vinyl. They have at least two albums prior to this and one after this. And the singer has went on to do other things. I'm not sure. I think there's only one after this that came out not too long ago. But this really, to me, is one of the best. Uh, the, the band was in sync. The, the singer was in sync. And it's probably one of the better sounding of the ones. And it was early released on vinyl. This is one of the early ones that Rocks did part of their Underground series. So, uh, anyway, yeah. So, great stuff. Straight up heavy metal at times. Borderline. You know, they have a little thrashy element, but they're not really that way. And the vocal at times uh, is can get a little on the you know deeper aggressive side but they don't really cross into that line much the singer was from uh jacob's dream they did a few albums on 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 metal blade i believe metal blade was the one that they did a couple albums on and so yeah and then he went on to do some of this stuff so great stuff all right up next blessed by a broken heart um these were just recently reissued on vinyl i believe last year and they have two albums that are on vinyl now the kind of a crossover band they were um you know some of the songs are pretty blatantly understood you know you could see the, the 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 christian overtones but for the most part they're kind of middle of the road they go from an 80s vibe to a straight up and on the first album very much almost death metal very aggressive and whatever and by this time they have some songs where they've got them screaming type vocals but then they got some songs that just sound like straight up hair metal and in in you know in aggra aggressive they got breakdowns and and everything but the vocals are very uh very much clean and and everything so you see some of the videos and you're like wow that's a really great band and then you buy it and you listen to some of these songs and they're like oh my gosh they're really aggressive and then you go back and get their first album and it's like super aggressive so um two totally different styles um, they have another album or so that came out, I think, later, but uh, only these two have been released on vinyl that I'm aware of at this point. So, And then up next, one, again, one of the top three of the Bs, Seattle band from the uh, late 80s. And yeah, Michael Bloodgood, who passed away like two years ago, a couple years ago now. Um, and so this is one of the early pioneers of Christian metal, along with Baron Cross and Striper. You kind of, when you're talking Christian metal, you're, you're spewing names like Striper, Baron Cross, and Bloodgood. These were like the top bands of the day in the in the mid to late 80s. This is their 85 uh, demo. Sounds high quality, but it's more self-release tape. And then they went on to get, you know, they got signed to Frontline Records, and they put out uh, the first album, Killer Stuff. This is the remaster that came out a couple years ago. This is an OG copy. I won't go on that. Here's a remastered vinyl reissue from a couple years ago. And here's my OG copy. And then here's my OG copy of Rock in a Hard Place. I don't know why this one, they skipped right over this one as far as a vinyl release. Maybe they'll come back. I'm not too worried about it because I've got an OG copy at this point. Um, Out of the Darkness was one of the harder ones to find on vinyl because it was only available overseas. And so now they have reissued that. So thankful and thrilled. And maybe that's why they skipped over the other one because it was hard to find. And then the most recent album, Dangerously Close, is the one that features, it's the last album they put out before Michael passed away. Michael passed away a couple years later. This album's been out. 10 years now um, but it has Oz Fox of Striper on here he in between uh, Striper's stuff he has been working with Bloodgood and so yeah anyway Les went on to do the singer Les went on to do a solo album about a year year or so ago and uh, I think Oz did some work on that too and some of the guys from Bloodgood but yeah Bloodgood is again one of the premier top bands in the Christian market period they you know they left an amazing mark on the scene for their work up next, another California band, The Brave. These guys came in with their arena rock and blew me away with this album. They did an album uh, after this. I don't think it's ever, I don't even think I have the CD of the one, uh, and it's not been on vinyl, but the first album, again, to me, is just, it's amazing. Everything straight up, great stuff. I mean, top to bottom, just anthem rock. And then they did a second album, was there only two why am i thinking there's three but there was only there was the trust album which but then you know like bands they disappeared this was it was the it was the early 90s they did that the, uh great to have that reissue in vinyl a couple years ago and then they were gone 
And then a handful of years ago, five, six years ago, what was the date on that? They got back together, 2021, three years ago, two days. They come back together with uh, Evie's Little Garden, and it's back. I mean, it's like Anthem. It's got that old school Anthem metal feel. Great stuff. And they've done some other stuff. This is the only one that's on vinyl. This is this is just you know great stuff checked out and the, and they're and they're active again and so very much looking forward to additional material from them but great stuff from the day and currently so all right and the end is going to be again one of the top three uh, of the bees for sure of the bands that have made their mark still making their mark and again probably one of the top five bands that's going to come out of somebody's mouth when you start talking christian metal classic christian metal you're going to be throwing out bands you know like striper and baron cross and blood good and you're probably going to hear in that same breath bride they have been around and they're still around tearing it up they got signed to one of the you know the, the christian labels uh, pure metal back in the day started off as a band called matrix I remember having bought custom cassettes directly from the band when they were called Matrix. And then we heard they got signed, came out with the first Bride album. Now, I'm not going to go through every single one, but I, I will show them real quick. They have changed styles and stuff over the years, but they have consistently put out top-notch music along the way. At the first album, Live the Die, these are the ones that have been reissued on vinyl in fairly recent years. Silence is Madness. This is a Kinetic Faith demos. Again, they, they had a bunch of demos that they released in the day and on CD and stuff. And so now there's some of it on, on vinyl. And then Kinetic Faith, the album. Then we got Snakes in the Playground demos. And we got Snakes in the Playground, the album. Most fans you talk to are probably still going to say this is the high mark, high water mark for the band. And they're going to say, if you want to check out Bride, you got to check this out. It ha It is right in that spot where if you like the Skid Rose and the Guns N' Roses and, and all of that stuff of the late 80s, this is the Bright album for you. It, it Everything came together in like near perfection. It was on one, it had more money put behind it, and I think it was on one of the more major labels, which is why it made it so hard to get reissued because it was very expensive to do. But they finally did, got it reissued on vinyl. Great stuff. Then uh, Drop, this is when they started kind of changing their sound, a little more stripped down, a little different. Sar Bomber is a more recent album, so there's a big gap between here and here of albums that have not been reissued. These, are, so these are the more modern era. The band kind of, you know, they kind of did. They were putting out stuff, but then they, you know, started getting fewer and far between, and then eventually, um, it, you know, it's almost like, oh, they're back. And then the Snake Eyes. This is them. Um, at this point, they were attempting to go for a more Snakes in the Playground sound, go back to that sound because they kept changing in style from album to album. Uh, and, you know, staying, staying current with some of the musical trends. This was kind of a attempt to go back to the Snakes album. And they did it. It was a great job. Here's your guide. This is one just from a couple years ago. Again, it is a, a, a definitely more of an approach to the original earlier sound. And you can see it says Bright is back. Because now we're, we're still seeing a little more time between each album. So you never know if there's going to be a new one. And, and then the most recent album, Are You Ready?, came out what is this like a year ago and again they're like i said they're still going strong and uh, it's mainly made up of dale and his brother troy on guitar and so they get together and do stuff and i think they're working on stuff now i keep seeing dale post about stuff on the new album so but him and troy are staying pretty active they're posting a lot of videos of them just having fun doing a, doing cover songs and they've been doing other projects and there's been a, a bride christmas album and a bride gospel old classic album with this with their father and a lot of stuff that they've released on the side cd wise um they just released the uh, snakes acoustic album on cd but uh i can see something like that eventually getting a vinyl reissue from somebody they're going to pick it up but the band does a lot of stuff on the side on their own and then stuff on various labels so this is the most recent official bright album and that's it that's it that's the b's and i don't think i missed anybody i did miss a couple bands in the a's somehow i skipped right over my collection but i think i got everything in the bees i've checked the list and checked it twice that's it for the bees don't want to make this too terribly long thanks for watching rock on and rock hard